the MI Golf Podcast with Paul Kelly and Morris J. It certainly is. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be listening to the MI Golf Podcast episode 54. 54. Uh, well, PK has been speaking to the dog's Brendan Lawler, who has earned himself a place at the Emirates Australian Open. We've our usual pro and amateur roundups. And we look ahead to the Ryder Cup and select our starting eight players to compete in the opening session of the Four Balls. What's going to happen? What's it going to be like? All will be revealed on this evening's podcast. Get the best prices on every round of golf with Hot Deals Tea Times exclusively from Golf Now. Available at more than 1,600 golf clubs throughout the UK and Ireland. Hot Deals save you up to 80% on thousands of tea times daily. Find the flame and save every time you play with Hot Deals only from Golf Now. But before we go any further, we have to address the issue of the Writer Cup, which is much more important than the other one that's coming up soon. This year's Writer Cup, the annual battle between good and bad, or otherwise known as the media from the north and the media from the south, saw the journalists from ROI and NI play at Art Glass and Warren Point with an overnight stay at the Sleeve Donard Hotel, which was very lovely. Unfortunately for us, Team NI... Bidding for four in a row were thwarted by their neighbours. Was it not three in a row? I think it was four. Did, did you just make that up? No, it was four in a row, I'm telling you. No, it was three. It was definitely four was in a row. Four? For, yeah, yeah. I thought it was three. See how much my mind was in the game. <laughs> uh, bidding for four in a row. Uh, however, our southern neighbours won overall seven and five. Rasa, frasa, rasa, frasa. <laughs> however, it has since emerged that there was some interference from an outside agency. Indeed, Morris. Stewart's Just took a wee inquiry. bit of sleuthing, Stuart's inquiry. So not long after he returned home, defeated and <laughs> devastated, news filtered through that Team ROI enlisted the support and advice of one point member and leading Irish amateur, Colin Campbell Jr. Colin! Would you believe it? Oh, come on, referee. So, Colin was offering the ORA boys advice on how to play the back nine, Morris. That's that's a shocker. And, like, as we all know, the back nine was decisive. Look at the support we've given him on the podcast over the years. And imagine stabbed us in the back. <laughs> Et to Brute. Can't Et to Campbell. It. Can't believe it. Uh, now, we don't want to be accused of sour grapes or anything, but clearly this news leaves the whole result under a cloud. Uh, we have made Tourism NI aware, and I think ROI Captain Irish Sun editor Cahill Durbin will be forced to address the matter publicly. So this is a public calling for Mr. Cal Durbin to give a public statement as to well, what happened? The handing, the handing the cup back. I think it's disgraceful. It, it wouldn't was, happen, Mars. It, it wouldn't happen anywhere else. No. Well, it, it was a great two days. It was as usual. It was as usual. Now it's uh, it, uh, our glass was uh, lit up to his day. Fantastic, isn't it? Fantastic condition. That, now we played our glass earlier in the year with the Press Golf Society yep. and. A lot of the bunkers and all that they put in over the winter weren't in play. That's right, they were then last but week. They were last week. <laughs> now, I have to say, I didn't visit one. Oh, gee, look at Unbelievably, I was too far right <laughs> to visit. Uh, maybe bunkers on a different fairway, <laughs> but certainly not the bunkers. You it was in a lovely condition now. Fair play to everybody up there. Paul Vaughan and the team have done a great job, as we've often said. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, just to see how the courses come on, and they've got more plans in place now for next year, Paul was saying. They're yeah. working again. The agronomists down, everything we, we yeah. were there but Warren Point did you ever play Warren Point before I hadn't played but just on, on the subject of our glass the yeah. two chaps that I was playing which is uh, Eddie Coffey from the Mail Mail and uh, Daily Star Owen Murphy <laughs> yep. they had never played our glass before Okay, and virtually every single corner they turned it was like wow unbelievable get wow. the camera out wow this is unreal. And Owen said it was the nicest course he'd ever walked in Ireland. That's right. He loved it. He absolutely raved about yeah. it. Yeah. But then you just gave him a good hammering, so at the very least. Again. Well, <coughs> no, to be fair, we didn't give him a good hammering. <laughs> we beat them on the 18th for the 25-foot oh. birdie putt. Oh, so it was tight enough. <laughs> 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 so you can afford to be big man on it then. Yeah, so that was the that was the force. Okay. You know, I've never played Warren Point. Yeah. And what a pretty course. Exactly. What a pretty course. And greens that are running smooth yeah, Whoa. great great greens and it was actually very strange uh, at the start of the, the course because it's, it's an interesting layout yeah because yeah. it starts par 5 par 3 par 5 par 5 so it's a good warm up <laughs> <laughs> for you boys you like to open your shoulders and let it out of there uh -huh. but it's it's a tight course three lines a um, lot of sort of dog legs there's not an awful lot of room so they've had to fit it in around the, the natural humps and hollows the back line is very pretty and it's very tight. 
Exactly. And okay, there's a couple of short par fours, mm-hmm. right, where you know you should be putting your driver away, mm-hmm. but of course you don't. And you try and drive the green. And you try and fly in a big high cut and <laughs> land it softly on the green at 270 <laughs> yards out. I love short par fours. And it kicks off the back. <laughs> <coughs> um, but yeah, so the, that I mean that back nine was lovely. Yeah. Really, really. It's nice. a nice golf course. It's a nice. It really is. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, um, I would go down and play it like at a drop of a hat. Yeah. And, v- and very, very. Uh, in terms of price, very competitive. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, as you say, it's handy enough. It's along the main road there between Uri and Warren Point. Um, and they do a lot of opens for people who are fancying going down to play it. A bit like our glass would do a lot of weekend opens as well. I would really, really love to play that course again. And if the weather, because we had a wee bit of rain, yeah. it was fairly a wee yeah. bit windy. Um, and now you know the course because exactly. you, you really do have to know, especially that back line, you really mm-hmm. have to kind of, because there's some, a couple of blind holes, blind tee shots. Definitely. And comp- some of the ones that sort of, if you aim at too far right or way down a slope uh-huh. on the other, way, trouble. the other way they're in trees yeah. so it's, it's, it's tight enough it, I believe that it was those particular points Morris that you're mentioning put away the driver that Colin Campbell was advising the your way oh, see, see. see did he say that to no, you no he didn't say that to me did he, he didn't say, to say that to me either did he say to any of our team well haven't heard from, all I've heard is that some of the your way boys thanking him publicly on Twitter is this like a GUI matter could we, could we, we escalate we might this? Have to, we might have to go above his head. But however. However, the NA Golf Cup, the NA Golf uh, Tourism event, the Ryder Cup going from strength to strength, nine of them so far, 10th next year, Mark. 10th next year, big 10th. Can't wait for it. It's going to be good. Uh, so thanks to everyone involved, uh, this, the team down south, well yes. done. Our team, well done. I didn't know we didn't do it. And uh, of course, Tourism and I and the hosting golf clubs Two this clubs, year, yeah. which were fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Drew Morris Golf now offers 12 months interest-free credit on everything bought online and in store. New golf clubs or that electric trolley you've been dreaming of for as little as £30 per month. Drive the extra mile to drive away happy. Check out andrewmorrisgolf.com for full terms and conditions. Andrew Morris Golf on the web and at Laganview Golf Centre Lambeg. Now the Ryder Cup is barely two weeks away. But is it? It is. You wouldn't know it, would you? The, oh, the Ryder Cup. The Ryder Cup. Oh, the Cup. less important one. Yeah, the one that nobody okay. cares about. All right. And rather than go over the whole why and why nots and who should have been selected for the Ryder Cup and why Sergio got the nod instead of Rafa, for example, uh, we've tried to sort of identify the pairings that are going to go forward. Morris J is going to play the part of Thomas Bjorn. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play the part of Jim Furyk, and we're going That's to like try a weird windy swing. Yeah, and we're going to try and identify the first groups for the four balls. Right now, as we know, it'll be hard to know that up until near the time they'll decide whether it's four balls or foursomes. But play along with us here. We're pretending it's four balls. Okay, so who goes first? You go first. On the tee from Northern Ireland, Ronnie McElroy. Right, well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with who, MJ? On the tee from somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know the town he lives in. Molinari. Interesting. Interesting. Why are you going for those two? Molinari is in form. Uh, playing extremely well. Rory, first and second in the Open they were. I just think it's a very strong partnership to kick off with. Rory's got the experience. Molinari's in form. Just get out there, get the get the current stars out and go for it. Well, I tell you who they're up against. Go on. Representing USA. Can I just say I do that better? <laughs> Can you do it better? Representing the Representing US- United States of America. <laughs> Bricks Kepka. Right. And Dustin Johnson. Oh, how boring and predictable. <laughs> they're going to shoot the lights out. Four balls, birdies, 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 boy. Birdies, mm. birdies, birdies. <laughs> Big hitters. Big hitters. Keep it but you don't have to be a big hitter around Paris 1999. You have to be straight along You're fairway. already terrified. You're no. already terrified. See, I thought you were going to say something interesting like Tiger and Phil. No, never happen again. Get the, the, get last the stars time. out there. Never again. Look what happened the last time fell apart. The fact that you know Tiger's been beaten 17 times in his Ryder Cup career and Phil's been beaten 20 times. Go on, take a punt. No, you see, that's the thing. You think I don't know these stats. You've been doing all your homework, but I know. I know. You can't pair them two together. Two big egos. Who's next up, big MJ? All right. Sorry, TJ, T- Thomas. On the tee from somewhere in southern England, Justin Rose. Obviously enough. They weren't number one. Could not have him out. Playing with... On the tee from Spain, John Ram. 
Oh, no, that's a bit weird. Why? I'd have thought you'd have gone automatically with the natural pairing of Stenson and them. No. You're splitting it up? Yeah, splitting it up. Go for it. They've, done it. they've done it before. They've done it well before. No, it's time to have the experience with the rookie and a bit of, you know, get a bit of power from the rookie, get okay. a bit of experience and, you know, steadiness from Rose. I like that. Have you got any stats to, to back that one up? Uh, no. No? No, no you've no, just gone. That's a gut, a gut instinct Well, job. Rose, apart from that, Rose has more, more wins than he has losses. You can't argue with that. He's so a he's top currently on, he's currently on eleven six two. Very good. So you know eleven and eleven needs, wins, six uh, six losses, and two wins, two and draws. Jo- and John Ram needs somebody to nurse him through a wee bit. Exactly. And you're obviously not picking Sergio to do that. No. Well, on the tee, I kind of know what you're going to say. Hey, you're going to say Justin Thomas and Webb Simpson. No. All right. I'm going to say. Reed and Spieth. Oh no! <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, tried and tested. No. Tried and tested. No, not not yeah, well. Okay. Tried and tested. Okay, right, a couple of played together yes. a number of times. Great record. Pair together. Enjoy playing with each other. Pity they're playing crap at the minute. Uh, Joint pen, no, I take them. I definitely take them over your two in that case. No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Okay, Reid will fire it up a wee bit. He's gonna be fired up and get Spieth. Spieth-y fired up. No, he's not dealing with the pressure at the minute. You'd think he's not got it. I no, disagree. Hundred no, percent. Not your second parent. Oh, the big! I think it's a big move. A big move. Go for it on the tee. On the tee from somewhere in England. <laughs> The Grand Master of the Ryder Cup, Mr. Ian Poulter. Oh, oh I don't like that. God. Why? Ian Poulter. He's, he's in form. He was in form. He's I in think form. he's going the other direction. Oh, he's what one bad round? Uh, I don't know. Go on, who you with? with another rookie, the guy oh. with the hair, Tommy Fleetwood. Actually, uh, that's quite a good pair. Two Englishmen Two together. Englishmen. Poulter with a fire in his belly. Yeah. Fleetwood, who can absolutely rip it to shreds whenever he he's on form. What a pl- that's quite a good And he's not far off. I'm and, not sure. What, what, what dummies is he playing on your team? Well, this is, I'm, I'm not that happy about this now because he's playing against Thomas and Fowler. You see, that's a tight. I, I, in some respects, the only thing I would say against that from the US point of view, hey man, they're both very experienced. Yeah, the, uh, Fowler, is, ex- Fowler is experienced in getting beat. Uh, <laughs> you got his record. I do, as well. of course. Go for it. Two wins, four losses, and five draws. I uh, can't have putt, mind you. Uh, rookie, Mister Thomas. Thomas, I think, is just a class act. A class act. But you're, uh, to be honest with you, it's I've, all. I've won that one, have I? I'll give you that one. And I'm winning the one before as well. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I'm not so mm. sure about Reed and Spieth. You're going to lose the first one, obviously, because the boys are going to bomb out. Eh? Well, um, six wins and five losses. For Dustin, six wins and five goals. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, Who was that other balloon? Was that, was that Brooks? Brooks. <laughs> he's only played. Was he played he once? Played, oh, he played, he's played, played once. Played three wins, one yeah. loss. So his his record is pretty good. He's a good okay. player. Right, finally, Morris. Okay, you see, Thomas, come on. You see, I'm, I'm in two minds I've, whether to put out these two or put out those two. No, you've got to pick. You can't choose. You can't choose midway through. Let's go. Bite the bullet. That's okay. what you get paid the big bucks for. Okay, then I'm going to go with... <laughs> On the tee from somewhere in England, <laughs> but living in America, Paul Casey. Going for the experience again. Going for the experience again. Could Although you? not that much experience, given well, that he's, he hasn't played in yeah, 10 years or something. Yeah. Uh, paired with on the T from some Scandinavian place, Olison. Oh, that's no. a big move. It was either him or Noren. Actually, on the no, T. No, 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 Yes, experience and experience rookie. and a birdie machine. What do you think? Uh, experience in losing again. No, don't more tell me. losses than wins. Of course, he's played so often. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> if you're losing, he played during all those periods where the US team was if getting hammered. If he's losing, oh, that's cool. And what's his record? What's Eighteen record? wins, twenty losses, seven draws. Can you work out if he's better at four balls or foursomes? Have you got that? I stuff? haven't got that far. Oh, thank God oh, for that. This took me about two hours to do some of this stuff this morning. <laughs> kind of so, in terms of an overall, Morris, sir, yes. what do you think? If you were, if you had got that, if you had rocked up, uh, as do you know Thomas, what? Just as from what you've said and from what I've said, I'm gonna say that 
it'll be 3-1 to the United States based on that first series of no, four three, no two and a half one and a half two and a half one and a half yeah. who would you fancy to get the one and a half for you for Europe uh, the half I'm going to say well, I can't remember your your, your parents again but I right, would say Brooks and Johnson Reid yeah. and Spieth Thomas and Fowler Fino okay, and Reed and Spieth is our win so that's Rose and Ram are going to beat Reid and Spieth <laughs> right um <laughs> I'm gonna go with Rory getting a half. Okay. With Molinari right, against Dustin the big, and the, the big Brooks guns, the big yeah, guns yeah. there. Uh huh. And then the other two, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah. It's tricky. I, Although I fancy Fleetwood and, and Poulter. Do you? We're talking like this is the actual pair. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you imagine the discussions they're all having at the same time? And you rock up the Ryder Cup and everybody's playing well. That's the sort of thing you you would like. But who do you think's going to win overall? Honestly. Do you know what? Up, I, on, up until today, everyone's talking about the Americans and they've got a stronger team and they're more informed and blah blah blah. And then just just looking at the numbers, just looking at the stats, I did a wee bit of crunching, and I'm thinking it's not as cut and dried as people might think, right? And I'll tell you for I'll tell you for why. For why? Here's for why. Um, in terms of the current teams as they stand for 2018, right? There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players have uh, played before for Europe. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for America, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Is that right? Could be, yes. I think it is. Um, the total wins for the people who have played for Europe, 61. Okay. The total losses for the people who have played for Europe thus far, 39. Which gives them a winning percentage of 61%. God, you really love us, that. I do. The, to the to total winnings for the American team are 57, which is still pretty close to 61, exactly. but not quite as good. However, their losses are 61, which gives them a winning percentage of 48%. Or a losing percentage of 52%. That's a good way of looking at it. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. <coughs> so, whenever you get rid of the um, the Owl Boys. Yes. Because when you look at Tiger and Phil, they've played 70,000 times. They've been yeah. playing since Tom Morris was playing. And you can't imagine them playing all five <laughs> sessions any longer. No, right. So if you get rid of, if you get rid of, what I, what I did was, I had a look at it from... <laughs> 2010 onwards because uh -huh. basically half of the, most of these teams weren't even playing in the Ryder Cup that's right you're proud there's a few like obviously yeah. so there was Garcia was there obviously uh, Casey played in a couple Pol of the early yeah. ones Polder played Polder. yeah, yeah. Uh, Justin Rose played in a couple yeah. right. so if you get rid of the ones who have played prior to 2010 and just looked at their record from 2010 onwards yeah right, it's a bit closer okay so Europe have a 50 Eight percent win rate okay. since 2010, compared to America's 53 percent. So it's a lot closer if you look at it from 2010. But regardless of which way you've tried to measure it up, Europe's better in both occasions that you come up with yes. your stats. Sir. But here's an, here's an even more interesting one, right? So what it did was I took the aggregate of <laughs> here's such an honor. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I took the aggregate of uh, wins versus losses. Okay. So in other words. Um, so basically going, okay, how many times have they won minus how many times they've lost? And it gives you an aggregate figure, right? So in order of how well they have actually done at the Ryder Cup in their careers in terms of wins versus losers yes. on aggregate, yes. by far the two most successful players are Poulter and Garcia oh. with an aggregate of plus eight. Right. right? The best two... Uh, Americans are who do you think? Reed, correct, and space Kepka. Oh, mm -hmm. that's interesting about Poulter now. Uh -huh. and so Garcia. Uh -huh. Poulter and Garcia both on plus eight. Right? Yeah, Reed and Kepka yeah. plus five and plus two. So yeah. if you based your parents on on this, it'd be yeah. interesting as well, right? But the question is, that's based on previous form, not current form. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so it's yeah. based on Ryder Cup history. So yeah. it's based on their performance in the Ryder, Ryder Cup, Cup, right? Yeah. The next pairing would be Justin Rose uh -huh. with plus five aggregate, great, great, and Rory plus three, right? Yeah. Versus up, up. Dustin Johnson plus one, yeah. Jordan Spieth plus one. That's a good team right? as well. Next pairing. On their past history, Paul Casey on one uh -huh. aggregate win. Stenson level. Stenson's only level. Yeah, yeah. 
Unless my Maz is out the window, and it could possibly be, but I put it up on Twitter earlier on today, yeah. and nobody's yet argued with it, so I think, you know, either they couldn't be arsed, <laughs> or it's actually yeah. right. And he, they would be up against well. Simpson, Webb Simpson, with an aggregate score of minus one, so he's got one more loss than he does win, and Fowler, who has two more losses than he does wins, so he's on minus two, right? So that was a fart there, sorry about that. <laughs> And then the final player for Europe to have a record is Molinari. Right. Because was he played, played him maybe once, was it? I think he only played, even though he played twice. Twice, was he it? He played at Medina and he played at Celtic Manor. Well, he's on minus three, so okay. his, his record's not great. See the way I just knew that off the top of my head. He's on minus three and he would be up against Phil, minus two, and one of our rookies and Tiger, minus four. See, Phil and Tiger together. Phil and Tiger together. They are on minus six. They've lost six times more than they've won. All right, so yeah. And then Bubba is last. He's the bottom of the pile. Yeah. Minus five. Oh, poor Bubba. Oh, poor but isn't that an interesting thing? Right? And what if you add all those together, then Europe have got plus 22 aggregate wins compared to America's minus five. So the Europeans are winning her. The They're, winning is... <coughs> they, well, and, you know, obviously they've won more times. Yes. But it does, it's not quite as simple as that. Yeah. Because this is the current team based on their rider previous, company, previous, previous history, history, right? So it's not, you know, because there's obviously a lot more players in there exactly. who are playing this exactly. year. and that would. But this yeah. is the current team and their history and their aggregate and how they... And I, I thought that was an interesting number. So the bottom... I still, I still haven't answered my question. What? Who's going to win? Uh, Based you know on all what? your stats. Do you know what? I am going to... Uh, up until today, I was probably thinking America because it's just a foreign... <laughs> I'm going to switch it around. And I'm going to say it's going to be fairly close. Uh, there'll probably be a, maybe a one and a half or two point deficit. But I'm going to go with Europe. Very good. Gonna well, go I, I'm going to follow the tribe and go... And say, I just think the USA are too powerful. And either way, I can't wait for it. It's always t- I a brilliant time of the oh, year class. to see the Ryder Cup and the crowds. And do you see some of the pictures of that first grandstand behind oh, the first day? Seventeen thousand seats or something. Massive. Can you imagine? That's going to be mental. Seventeen thousand. Oh, Mars! We'll have to get to one of those one well, of the years. There's uh, one of our uh, one of our Ryder Cup teams yes. heading out, and uh, we did say to him last week, "We'll, we'll be we'll be ringing you for some, for some chatter <laughs> up, uh, from the Ryder Cup." So uh, we'll speak to Adam on the next on the next podcast. That'll be good so. to hear. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. So we're looking forward to it immensely. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Um, it's, it's what 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 day are we now? Two, we're on, we're on just over three, two weeks away. It's, le- it's less than that, isn't it? Yeah, well, it starts on the Friday. Oh, I so it's yeah, so it's, yeah, it's just on. So fantastic. It's a great. I always think it's a great way to sort of bring the year to a close. Even though there's golf after it, it kind of feels like that's a year winding up at that stage. And do you know what? I can't wait <clears throat> till the Monday after it's finished when you text me. No, no, no. Well, well there, there will be that whenever I say, up your bum. <laughs> but apart from that, it's whenever I cancel my Sky Sports subscription. <laughs> yes, I can't wait. At clubstohire.com, you can take all the hassle out of your golf travel and rent your clubs before you fly. Clubs to Hire offer the very latest sets from just £32 per week, including the brand new M4 clubs from TaylorMade. And Clubs to Hire have just opened three new locations in Australia. That's 26 locations worldwide. So wherever you're travelling to play golf, choose the easy option and hire your clubs at clubstohire.com well, On with the pro news Mr Kelly yeah, The final women's major of the year the Avian Championship was won by Angela Stanford who carried the final round 68 to win by a shot the 40, 40 year old American finally made her major breakthrough after 76 attempts Well, wow. yeah uh, staying with women's golf, Stephanie Meadow finished 13th at the Murphy USA uh, El Dorado shootout, which has moved her up to second on the Volvic race for the card order of merit. Does this look good for Stephanie or I what? I think it's looking really good. Fingers crossed. Don't want jinx her. Nope. The top 10 earned their LPGA cards for 2019, and with three events, Stephanie is looking well placed to get her goal. Leona Maguire finished tie for 29th on six over par. Uh, Michael Hoy finished in a share of fifth at the Kazakhstan Open. He's having a great year. Yeah, he collected a nice check worth about 17,000, but more importantly, it's moved him up in the road to the Ras Alchemy in standings. That's their order merit. He's 18th, and remember, the top 15 earned their place on Euro Tour next year. Scotland's game just Johnson won the event with Gavin Moynihan finished tied for 20th. Now there's only four events remaining on a challenge tour. This week the tour has stopped in France for the Hops Open de Provence. Cormac Charvin, Gavin Moynihan, Rui McGee, 
Michael Hoy and Johnny Caldwell are all in action. And just a quick reminder, the Challenge Tour will be making a stop at Conquerwood for the Monaghan Irish Challenge. That's from October 4th to October 7th. It's going to be a great Challenge Tour event yeah. down at Conquer. Conquer's yeah. a great venue. And they've put an awful lot of work in there. They've been adding, checking bunkers out and changing bunkers and putting a new chipping green. It's been hard at work. Are we so going to give Connor a wee ring maybe before the event? Or well, we we should have one more podcast to squeeze in before we that. we might just get one in the week after. It could be the same week, actually. It'd be uh, good right to get on. it. Uh, they've really been putting in the hard work down there so good luck with that and the PGA Tour took a bit of a break last week ahead of this week's Tour Championship in Atlanta Bryson DeChambeau mm. you love him headlines a 30 man field that will determine the season champion as the FedEx playoffs once again wrap up in Atlanta at Eastlake Golf Club the new work number one Justin Rose a wee bit about Justin Rose what a legend oh absolutely absolutely it, you know, it was probably going to happen at some stage it's just a pity yeah, he, he had didn't do the a, win such a crappy of all the round. people in the league too <laughs> Keegan Bradley. Hello. Stop, start, play. stop, start, I stop, know, start. Fair play. No, well, he's, he's knocked a wee bit in the head. Yeah. He's oh. really trying hard with that. When you suppose he's come back, so for Bradley, this case, yeah. come back so well from the short putter, come to go to the short putter. Yeah, and but you know, he's, he's knocked a wee bit of that yippy oh, stuff in the head. Hard to and, but, but he's good. He hits it a long way. He hits it Further than people think. He's very you know? tall, isn't he? He is very yeah. tall. So Justin Rose, Tony Fino, Tony Fino, my mate Tony, uh-huh. Dustin Johnson, I'll defending I'll champion. Floppy, I'll floppy ankle. <laughs> Justin Rose are the five players who can win the £10 million end of season bonus simply by winning the Tour Championship. Now, Rory is ranked 17th in the standings, which means he's going to need some help from the others if he can win the FedEx Cup. And his putter went cold just oh. a wee bit oh. in the final round of the BMW Championship, which was won by Keegan Bradley. As I you know, keep telling everybody whenever uh, we, ta- we, ch- we chatted to Rory at the Irish Open, mm-hmm. and the one thing that stands out in my mind, which is, Totally personified by this tournament because he went fantastic putter, crap putter, fantastic putter, crap putter in the four days of the tournament, right? <clears throat> and what he said to us at the Irish Open was, if I could putt like I did on the Thursday at the Irish Open, I would win every week. Exactly. And he's not wrong. He shoots 62 and should have been a 59. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. And he's just, oh, then oh, it yeah. comes to the final round when he needs to hold him. I was, watch, I was watching it on the Monday afternoon and my head was turned. Pulling your hair out. Oh, like, I what? said, can you imagine, why do you think people break golf clubs, Morris? 13 out of 14 greens or something. And, and in the sand, and feet and eight feet and every damn thing. And the uh, back nine was just Not like even hitting the hole. Seven birdie putts in the back nine. Oh, oh. must break his heart. Oh. Uh, so yes, his putter didn't give you anything one by yeah, your man, Keegan Bradley. Uh, Ashen Wu became the first Chinese player to win three times on the European Tour by making a birdie on the final hole to secure a one-stroke victory over Chris Wood. Uh, Chris Wood was pretty disappointed, wasn't he? Was he got it. Yeah, three he the last, you say, for it? Uh, at the KLM Open. Uh, the Tour has moved on to Portugal this week for the Portugal Masters. That's always a great event. Great. I think it's a, a, a great one in terms of a lot of people go from here. Yeah, exactly. From Because, because there's yes. flights from Belfast, flights, flights straight from out. Dublin. Exactly. You're there. It's a Get a bit of bit sun. Of, get a bit of sun. Play a wee bit of golf. You Brilliant. Can. Uh, Patrick Harrington who finished fifth at the KLM is in action alongside Shane Lowry, Paul Dunn and making his pro debut Robin Dawson. That's right. And it's hard to imagine but the European Tour Q School is ready underway. Cheaper. I know. October, September. And Mount Julius Luke Donnelly and our old friend Old Connors, Neil O'Brien, they've advanced the second stage of this qualifying school that was in Bristol last week. And this week in action are Dermy McElroy and Colin Fairweather over at Stoke by Nyland. Thank you very much, Squire. What I gotta say, we don't need to do that one, we need to do that one. Get the best prices on every round of golf with Hot Deals Tea Times exclusively from Golf Now. Available at more than 1,600 golf clubs throughout the UK and Ireland. Hot Deals save you up to 80% on thousands of tea times daily. Find the flame and save every time you play with Hot Deals only from Golf Now. Now, it's not very often that um, renowned golf journalists, such as yourself, yes. or the likes of Alan Shipnock, yes. would ever talk about my golf. No. However, today, I didn't want Alan Shipnock talking about my golf. I, I didn't expect him to tweet about my golf. <laughs> it was somewhat of a surprise. I don't know why. I don't know how he saw the tweet originally. But it just shows you how weird and wonderful Twitter, is. Twitter and the internet is. Yes. 
Now that I will, I will share it before you, you know, go off on go one. Go off on one and give me a hard time. Today, uh, listeners of the NI Golf Podcast, I had my first ever hole in one. Boo! Thank you for that. Boo. Uh, I totally agree, and I would, I actually booed myself because you- it was a shitty duff <laughs> of uh, a, a, a softy Nancy boy <laughs> pitch and wedge. I can't say that. Nancy boy. <laughs> Pitch and wedge that I be- I didn't duff it. I just hit it really. I didn't commit to it, right? Okay. Because I was trying to. Am I, it's the sixth hole of Hollywood. It's about a hundred and five yards, very steeply downhill to the middle of the green off the whites. It's a flick. It's a wee flick, and I have this wee sort of half pitch and wedge where I literally just dolly it down. Right. The day before, three feet stitched. Today, I took it. I just dollied it too much, so it was basically just weak as water. <laughs> It hardly ca- carried the front bunker. It hit the down slope of the back of the bunker, and it started rolling up the green, which is a slopey green from low to high of the back. And it just started going towards the hole. And I started going. And then Robert, who was playing with, said, "That's going to go in. That's going in. That's going in." And I put my head in my hands and said, "Please, don't go in." Right? Looked up, bang! Hit the pin and went in. And I went, "You." <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was raging. I was disgusted. I hope you're not looking any sympathy from me, because you're no, not getting I any want, sympathy. I know, but I want people to under, you know, because I put it up on, on yes. right, so they say, oh, you got to get a photograph, take a photograph. Yeah, it's a hole in one. It's a hole in one. I don't want a photograph. It doesn't matter. It's not a real hole in one. It's a, it's a, a, a shitty duff hole in one. Where did it finish up? Irrelevant. <laughs> it's no, not irrelevant. irrelevant. If it was a Saturday in a competition... <laughs> Fantastic. Quid's in, in the twos club, bingo bongo, 100 quid. <laughs> Fine, right? And I'll be doing backflips. Yes. Because I don't care. Yes. But, as my father always told me, your first time should be special. <laughs> and it wasn't. Save yourself for the first time, because it should be special. <laughs> and it wasn't special. I was really disappointed. You must have had this built up in your head that you were going to hit high towering, drawn six iron into a part three over water that would pitch and check and drop in the front in front of a crowd of hundreds and you would turn around and say yes that's me baby how did, how did you know I knew I just how, know the you, way you did, are did you read my mind uh, you see I'm of the other opinion what yardage was that hole I would say somewhere in a region of 180 no it was 194 <laughs> so you've already uh-huh, you've had this dream uh-huh, uh-huh. the rest of us the mere mortals amongst us who are still waiting for a hole in one well but, I, that's the good bit <laughs> <laughs> we're still waiting for a hole in one know, but it, would it, take it, it any way it comes no, but it did you re- buy a drink Yes, I had to. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, and you got your picture taken, even though you're, you've got oh. a face on you like you're trying to eat oh, It was just so... It was, it was crap. It just was a crap shot, a crap but it doesn't shot. matter. Oh, it was it in the hole. It does matter. It does matter. Everyone's you're saying, perfectionist. I know, but everyone's saying this at the club, and everyone's saying on Twitter, it does matter. It's in the hole. It's still a wall. That's all that matters. No, it does matter. In years to That's, come, somebody's no. going to say, if you had a hole in one, and you're going to say, <clears throat> I, yes. I, no, absolutely. I will stand by and say, I had a I, shit hole in one. I duffed it and it was crap <laughs> and I hated it and I still hate it. Until With I do the one the you proper, just described. The proper, the draw, the big draw. Right, that's in front of a big crowd. Until I do that, that doesn't count as enough. Well, it's a hot. No sympathy here and I hope all our listeners are the same. No sympathy for him. Thank yeah. you very much. However, it's interesting that Alan Shipnock, he, he said my uh, deepest sympathies or something like Alan that. Alan Shipnock, by the way, is, is, a, is, a, is a renowned US-based <laughs> golf journalist who has fallen out with many as a person over the last while because... It is his opinion that the USA is likely to win the next 25 Ryder Cups. Well, and obviously, you know. I'm in that category. Com- commenting on my golf. He's talking about <laughs> music. So anyway, so that was, that was today. And it was, uh, it's a bad job when you've had a hole in one and you're miserable. I know, but I've been in bad form since it has. <laughs> it, took, it really took the shine off my <laughs> first number dead. one. I know. It's just anyway. You're a strange man. Thank you. Dundalk's Brendan Lawler has been blazing a trail all summer playing in the European Disabled Golf Association events. Uh, Brendan is four foot 11 inches. Big lad. Me and him stand together at some crack. What what is your your yardage? <laughs> my my particular height. Yes. And listen, traditionally I'd have said I'm four foot two, but I'm getting on now, and I got measured recently at some old thing. I'm four foot one and a half, and that extra half inch makes all the difference. So he he's basically he's like bigger a, than me. He's, he, yes. Yeah. He'd be like a Dustin bag. Johnson, and you'd be like a Rory kind of thing. <laughs> okay. So Brent is four eleven, yeah. and his physical appearance uh, is the result of Ellis Van Crevel syndrome. Yeah, I've never yeah. heard of that before. Never heard of it before yeah. uh, 
bone growth disorder that leads to shorter limbs. Now, the 21-year-old is preparing to fly to Sydney in November to compete in something of a world first at the Emirates Australian Open. Uh, on the same course, at the same time, and under the same playing conditions, 12 of the world's top golfers with a disability will share the fairways with the pros, competing for the Australian All Abilities Championship at the Lakes Golf Club. Paul sat down with Brendan for a wee bit of a yarn. Brendan Lawler is possibly at the minute Ireland's most decorated disabled golfer. Uh, he's done remarkably well this year playing his first season on the EDGA. And we're delighted to say Brenton's joined us on the podcast today. Brenton, what a year you've had so far. Um, how have you found the level of golf around Europe this year? Um, level of golf around Europe this year has been phenomenal. It's... Um, I, I underestimated the amount of talent there would be at the very start, and that's probably why I didn't do well for my very first event. I, I came, I came tied fifth. Now it was, it was an elite event. It was the last one of uh, of the year, 2017, and it was my first one, and I play off a handicap too. So I think at going over, all oh, this will be a breeze. But the level of golf over there was ridiculous. There's people off scratch plus one, and and what they can do with a golf ball, it's. You wouldn't see pros do it. it. It's it's phenomenal. It's unbelievable. So you've got your eyes open, but you've also managed to adapt and done well competitively. Um, how many wins? And sort of give us a, a recap of your season. Uh, I have three wins to date so far out of six. Um, I went to Troy then two months after my very first event, and um, again it was an elite group. I, l- I learned a lot from my very first event. I was delighted. And. In terms of your own career, Brenton, you know, give us a wee bit of background. When did you start playing golf? And, uh, you know, uh, I believe you spent a bit of time at Darren Clark Golf School. I did, yeah. Um, I never I never actually considered myself as having a disability. So I, I played pitch and putt throughout my whole life. Pitch and putt, it's, it's a part, it's like par three golf. Longest hole is 70 yards. But I won in, I won in All-Ireland in the adult grade in pitch and push when I was um, when I was 16. And I won a Leinster the same year when I was 16. So I always had a game in my locker. So I only I only turned to golf at 17. I was a late starter because I never had the strength. I was always a wee bit shorter in stature. Didn't think I'd have the strength, but obviously practice makes perfect. I, I practiced and practiced. And I hit the ball about 260 now. So I'm not much shorter than, than the average bear, may say. Um, but, um, yeah, so I started golf at 17. I think I got a handicap at 28, as everyone would. I had something like 52 points my first event. It was it was something ridiculous like that. So they'd give me a massive chop for that. I think I got down to around 11 in my first year. Then the last four years just kept nipping and tucking them off one. So, yeah. so I'm delighted. I'm delighted where my game is now. I'm not really worried about handicap anymore. I'm just I'm going out to play golf and try and enjoy it as much as I can. And you spent a couple of years up at the Darren Clark School. What did that do for you? Darren Clark School, it was fantastic. It was, um, it was great crack with all the lads, obviously. And then... Um, the golf it was very serious it was you're up early you were you're, you're practicing every day there was education involved as well and it wasn't as much as college where you're in every day it was only it was only two days a week and and then um, Greenmount campus where it was and the facilities there as you may know are, are phenomenal there's putting greens chipping greens so i i stayed over there and then um, after class you just went out with the lads like you didn't think you were practicing, but you're having chipping competitions. It's going to bring on your game. Your 24-hour facilities. It was class. Now the big thing, the big news is, and why I come down to, to speak to you was, um, you've been now invited to Australia to play in the Emirates Australian Open um, in November. So explain a bit how you get into it first, and then you know what do you make of the whole thing. Yeah, see, we were given that news in Troy at the European Championships. So my ranking was around, I think I was ranked, I think I was 18th or 19th in, in Europe at, at that time. So I knew myself, that announcement was made. So I said, oh, no, I'm, I'm outside that top 10. It was the top 10 in Europe, the top six, sorry, in Europe that went. And I said to myself, oh, I have a hope of getting there. Yeah. But I worked really hard in my game. Then I, there was two events left. There was the Czech Republic, which there was huge points for, and there was um, Sweden. So I said to myself... Uh, were they this year or last year? This is this year. Okay. So I said to myself, I need to do well. I need to pull some out of the bag here if I want to go to Australia. So I went to the Czech Republic, 
and um, I knew I needed to shoot a low round first because there was a pro golfer there. His very first event, he um, he had an accident. I think it was two years ago. He was in a permanent leg brace, but he was off plus two, so I knew he could shoot a low number. It went well for me. I, I was um, two under after eight, and on the ninth hole, I hit a hole in one. <laughs> so I was four under after nine. So when you're that, when you're going that well, you're thinking. Right, just try and keep it going, keep it going. Obviously, I dropped a few few shots, taking away score. I finished two under for the round, which was great shooting. It was um, it was my best score to date on the EDGA tour. And your man, the fella from the Czech Republic, he shot uh, three over. Came to the second round, and um, he done he done the same. The second round, he he was three under after nine, nine's one over. So we were all square going down the last. But then. Uh, I finished one over for the round, which was which was good shooting. I think he finished two over for the round. So I won that by, I think, five shots in the end. So I had to go out and win that. So I think that bumped me up to eighth in the world then. I, I wasn't going to go to Sweden. So I said, right, Dad said, if you want to go to Australia, you're going to Sweden. So I was five shots behind after the first round, which is it's a big margin, but maybe in this case it wasn't so big. And um, I started off birdie, birdie the second round. So I said, right, let's go. It's going well. Then on nine, I pulled into the water. So I dropped a few shots coming in. I finished two over the round, but I came tied second. Or I came second on my own, which was enough to get me to turn third in Europe. So going out, knowing that I had to do well, it felt good for me to produce that and know I could do it. And finally, Brant, just a week question about raising the profile of disabled golf and disabled golf in Ireland it's it's a bit behind we'll, we'll agree that yeah. um, but, but sort of what you're doing is definitely raising the profile and getting people interested and I'd like let's be honest you and me both play golf and enjoy it it's a great a great of, uh, a opportunity for anybody to get yeah. played yeah golf's a game for everyone I think I think people just need to realise that there can be elitists in their own categories so um like there, Robin Dawson, Keelan Rafferty is a local here from Dundalk. They're they're at the top level of their game, and I don't see myself as any different being a top level of where I'm doing either. So I think that it should be looked at both ways. Um, maybe the support should be there for for both yeah. both leaders. At clubstohire.com, you can take all the hassle out of your golf travel and rent your clubs before you fly. Clubs to Hire offer the very latest sets from just £32 per week, including the brand new M4 clubs from TaylorMade. And Clubs to Hire have just opened three new locations in Australia. That's 26 locations worldwide. So wherever you're travelling to play golf, choose the easy option and hire your clubs at clubstohire.com. Mr. Kelly, on with the pro news, please. Or sorry, amateur news. Yeah, um, Ireland had to settle for second at the home internationals. As England beat them on the final day to, to deny the reigning champions a five in a row. Uh, a mention from Mazarin's Chairman McLaurin, who finished with a 100% record in the home internationals. Very good. Six out of six. Ireland finished tied 10th at the Eisenhower Trophy down at Carton House. The event was won by Denmark. And in the ladies' version of the World Amateur Team Championships, Ireland finished 11th with the USA walking away with the Esprit de Santo Trophy. And the Inter Pros were won by Munster, who beat Leinster on the final day to collect the title for the first time since 2014. That's it. Uh, congrats to Lisburn Golf Club who beat Hollywood uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, beat Hollywood in the final of the Fred Dilly Trophy and to Royal Port Rush who, def- who collected the Fred Dilly Plate and Clanley Boy won the Barton Shield beating Lurgan in the final at Beaver Park they will go forward to the All Ireland Cups and Shields which will take place at Turles Golf Club and that's from October the 4th to the 7th and Ireland finished 12th at the World Junior Girls Championship in Canada the team of Annabelle Wilson Lauren Walsh and Sarah Byrne finished on plus 17 and so that is it for episode 54 don't forget we're on twitter we're on facebook we're on instagram do get in touch yeah talking about twitter gordon mccadden who follows us on the old ni golf podcast yes account, he got in touch via twitter asking us to support a bid to get the self-styled guardians of the Ryder cup barred from the first date the Ryder cup you see i didn't know who what were this was <laughs> but then whenever you explained who, who they are yeah, yeah. ah suddenly it all makes sense yes they're the guys for people who don't know i'm sure you do if you look at the Ryder cup front and center there'll be about eight or nine of them they've got sort of dungarees on the polka dot puffs and they're the guys that come up with all these weird 
chats about Olsen and McElroy and it's not spontaneous. They've obviously spent hours sitting in a pub somewhere doing it. Now, is Gordon just jealous that he's not there doing that? I don't know. I think Gordon is of the grumpy school of thought which thinks, enough lads, we've heard it all too much. Thank you very much. You've had your ten minutes. He, al- he also, I think, it's the, it's the fact that Sky Golf tend to focus on these boys they, a lot. They, they, they know, do so. give them an awful lot of yes. coverage. And it, it probably has, I would be of the opinion that, yes... We've had enough. Thank you very much. So you want to start the I campaign want, to get them out? I want to get rid of them. It's a bit like, do you imagine, I wonder what it's like. Do you know where if you're watching a football match, or if you're in a stand at a football or rugby game, and some agent has a drum beside him? Oh. I would say after... That's about, what that's like. I would say after 10 minutes of these boys, you're like, can I move? Okay, on that basis, yes, I support the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> However, I will go fully uh, along with this. If... They can also ban and uh, anybody who shouts Bubba Booey, anybody who shouts Get in the Hole, uh, anyone who shouts USA, 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 <laughs> out, 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 right? Out. We need some French farmers with cattle, electric cattle prods. And, <laughs> right, so. That would be interesting. Not like off nice now. Um, so that's it from us for episode 54. Thank you for listening. Does say get in touch on Twitter. Uh, and if you want to follow, have a chat about it, uh, at NI Golf Podcast and on Facebook, on as Facebook well. and on Instagram. And uh, our next podcast will be post Ryder Cup. Ryder Cup and pre challenge at Monan. At Grand Conqueror Wood, yeah. Uh, so have a good fortnight, everybody. Is this, uh, this is coming to the end of the qualifying competitions as well. It'll be Winter League soon. <laughs> What a hard to imagine, isn't it? Storm Alley tomorrow as we're recording yes, and Winter and League then. Winter League off. starting off in about a week. Especially when the storms arrive. Uh, so we shall see you next time. Don't touch me. See you. Shaking that ass. Shaking that ass. Shaking that ass. See you. Shaking that ass. Shaking that ass. <laughs>